Hello, my name is Vincent. I'm going to present you what is a digital twin today. And we're going to see why some customers are saving money thanks to these principles. First of all, Vincent Tavancam, I created the company Factovia, specialized in Industry 4.0. And I used to present on TV, for example, with Thierry Dano, the leader, worldwide leader for Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, uh, specialized in Industry 4.0. Uh, we're talking about the cloud, IoT, and also I do provide some keynotes. First of all, what is a digital twin and where does that fit into the global overview of Industry 4.0? On the top of the iceberg, we can see that we've got 30% of the technology. Within those amount of technology, we can see 17 technologies. Uh, that we can usually find in Industry 4.0. I can name some of them, the cloud, IoT Edge, uh, the cobots, 5G, and so on and so forth, including the 10th one, its digital twin. So we can see this is only a drop of water uh, out of the entire iceberg. The rest of the iceberg uh, is a lot more difficult. It's dealing with human resources, it's dealing with training and processes that you have to change when you arrive in a company implementing Industry 4.0 and in fact, implementing any project. So it's 70% of the difficulty. 30% is already difficult, it's the technology, but this is the easiest out uh, compared to the other one. Now, if we focus on Digital Twin, uh, when you arrive in a company, you should have a global vision of the worldwide situation, of the context of your company. Then if you deep dive, deep dive you will see the, for your company the digital strategy and you have to determine what is the di digital strategy for your own company and share that amongst everyone. Then we will see the, the ratio 30%, 70%. And finally, as a summary, we can see the um, 17 technologies and uh, at the very bottom, the IoT digital twin. Sometimes we say digital twin, sometimes we say IoT digital twin because they are all, they are related to each other, as we will see later on. The common errors are the following. Uh, usually when we start a project, we should know that you, you've got nearly 90%, 90% of chances that your project will fail. So obviously, because you don't want your project to fail, no one wants a project to fail, you should be careful and you should analyze the, 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 the reason why the other project fails. So first of all, the technology shouldn't be uh, the, the main focus of a project. So it could be, it should be the, the last problem. And uh, as we could guess, the human uh, elements is very important and we should start by the human. We should share as a human the same vision within the, the, the company, the clear vision of what the strategy, the vision is, the digital strategy is. Uh, again, this is not a technology called project. It's not from the bottom up but uh, it's more a top-down approach. And the top-down approach uh, to, so that everyone could um, speak to each other and speak the same language, it goes through a shared vision and it goes through education. Today, we live in a world where we've got big problems, even more than uh, before because of the global warming. We've got uh, also the COVID. Now we're, we're getting kind of used to it. Uh, we've got the war. We've got the explosion of the price of the energy, of all kinds of energy. It leads to a massive shortage, shortage of uh, at the beginning of the mask, the COVID masks, the microprocessors for building your cars, for uh, molecules for your medicines. We can't even take uh, basic medicines because we've got a shortage in one molecule, in food, in energy, and so on and so forth. Which means some company, they have to pay 10 times the price of the energy. Instead of paying 1 million, they pay 10 million uh, dollars, sometimes a year, 
worth some other people in the uh, glass industry it's per month uh, which means one company out of four is considering closing their company or already closed its his company one of the biggest shortage is the industrial workforce shortage uh, which means uh, we talked about earlier on about the education. We will see how does that fit into the, the ecosystem. The origin of the digital twin, it's long time ago because uh, we, we started to get the concept in 1960 by the NASA. And then we, we got the first book uh, about it in 1991. Uh, then in 2002, uh, we've got the University of Michigan talking about it. And recently, in year 2020, uh, the, we had the Digital Twin consor Consortium, which means a group of industrials, a group of people, they sat together and they said, OK, well, let's try to figure out uh, about a, a vision and make something a kind of standard between each other. So you could say, wow, that's wonderful. It's a long time ago. That's a very robust uh, thing, the digital twin. It's old. But before talking about digital twin and deep diving into what it does, we should take a step back and then uh, look at what we want to achieve. We want to achieve um, the saving of the money in real time, not waiting one month and then say, OK, I might save some money here and there. No, I want to see where I can save the money just now. I want to have an immediate positive uh, environmental impact, not in one week, not in two years, just now. Uh, from the press of a button from my mobile phone, for example, I want to have a good positive impact on the environment. So let's take a, an example of a use case number one. We want to send a technical uh, maintenance technician guy in a, in a factory so he could replace a whole old heaters. So let's assume that we've got the following sentence. Given I own, as a boss, given I own 45 factories worldwide, when I find a factory plant, any factory plant within my 45 factory uh, factories, when we've got a factory built uh, before uh, 2001 and when I've got an electrical heater that was sold um, in, uh, before the year 1989, uh, then could you send me please a, a mail, a snail mail, regular mail to the occupant and send a maintenance technician to replace the old heater so that I will save some money instead of uh, wasting the money uh, because of the inefficient heat. So that's good. That's good for the environment. That's good for the impact, uh, a positive impact of the CO2. Um, and we save the money because we're not uh, hitting the, the outside world for nothing. So that's good, but that's not quick enough. Let's consider the second use case. Second use case, I want to act directly within a, a modern uh, factory and light on or off some lights and light on and off some heaters so now let's give the let's give the fact that i still own 45 factories worldwide when i've got uh when it's 19 degrees celsius outside and it's 9 pm at least and then uh, i want to find all the lights on the plant floor that is producing uh, less than 40 parts per hour 40 parts per hour and when we reach those conditions I want to turn all the lights uh, on for example and I want to configure the temperature as to be 19 degrees so that was uh, a quite complex uh, query but uh, let's say we, we, we could save some uh, we could have some positive impact just now because my wish is that to turn on the lights, all the lights, uh, from the, from the um, click of a mouse. And I want to configure the temperature as soon as possible, not wait for the, the, 
the, an email and a technical guy who comes on board and turn all the heater uh, on or off according to the needs so that we could reach 19 degrees. So that's good for the environmental impact just now, instantaneously. Now we're going to see uh, that we, now that we know what we want to achieve, we're going to see a little bit of the evolution of the digital twin. We've got four phases. The first phase is uh, the physical version. So you've got a physical factory. We've got, we don't have a digital twin. This is a real factory. Then you've got a copy of this factory. It's a copy, it's not a round uh, digital twin. It's a digital version, but a square version. Second phase. Uh, today, we're having the, the third stage where we've got the physical factory. It's a round uh, oval. And we've got a digital version that is not a square or a rectangle anymore, but it's a little bit rounded. And we can swap one digital factory with physical factory, as we will see later on with examples. That's today. Today, we deal with what we call anthology or some... Uh, it's very re related to taxonomy, so it's dealing with uh, the vocabulary and how we organize the information and how they relate, the information relate to each other, the ontology. And these, uh, those um, concepts have been formalized within the Digital Twin Consortium uh, created in the 6th of October uh, 2020. It's recent. We can find the major actors uh, behind the scene. This is today. And the future, the fourth stage, is to have exactly the same or nearly exactly the same digital version and physical version. And we can swap uh, exactly the one with another. So those are the four phases. And now that we, we saw the phases, how does that work? Let's have a little bit of explanation. We saw the query, the long query earlier on. We want the query to be actionable. You, the, the query, let's, let's assume this, uh, we, we have a button behind the query. I press the button of the query. I want to turn on and off uh, some lights worldwide. Or for example, some customer of mine, uh, they say, okay, let's find the customer who forgot to pay uh, the, 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 the bill for the last three months and who bought such and such uh, devices uh, deployed in such a region worldwide, but not in this region. So the, the complexity of the query start to be important. And usually when we've got important queries, we call, uh, we've got what we call uh, joints. So we have to join the, a lot of tables and the more table we join, the, more, uh, the slower we've got uh, as a response. So instead of waiting, I don't know, one second, you will wait 30 minutes to get an answer. That's the traditional relational uh, database type. It's very slow because of the jointure. On the other end, we've got hierarchy, uh, the database hierarchy. The model is like a family tree. You've got uh, the grandfather, you've got the father and uh, mother, you've got the kids, and uh, you've got uh, uh, other uh, number two, the level number two of the kids. So that's hierarchy. The hierarchy allows you to do the query very rapidly. In the hierarchy model, it's very rapid. The digital twin uh, adds on the top of that, because that does exist for a while, the, the hierarchy um, database. It's as if every single level, every um, square that you see, level two child, level two child, level one child, and so on and so forth, every rectangle has got uh, connectivity to IoT in real time and in bi-directional way, which means I can change the model uh, digitally, it will change physically. I can change physically, it will change uh, digitally. And for all the stages, which means now you've got a large database of many devices, many, many things. You can query them. Once you find the answer, you can apply some actions. 
let's apply massive update, uh, update version 1.1 on those amount of devices. Let's turn on and off uh, the heater for this. Let's do that. So you can, you can model, you can touch the, nearly physically the, the, um, the devices, although this is done uh, remotely. Uh, coming back to the, the evolution of the digital twin, I wanted to put some pictures. When I started uh, mechanical engineering, we had the following thing on the far left. This is a door, like a um, garage door that opens up. Uh, so you've got this model, either you drew, you drew on the board manually, but this one, uh, you drew it uh, manually and you make some uh, circles to to determine the the orientation and how the door rotates then second step step uh, we use the, the the computer to do the same but in the simulation so we can do a lot of combinations we can make it uh, move quicker instead of doing 20 20 drawings manually we just make one model and make it move Later, just later after, uh, we've got the same thing, but in 3D. And recently, we've got the real object and the model. They are nearly merged all together. You change one, it changes the other one, vice versa. So if we focus now on the digital twin area, um, I made it simple. It's not exactly like this, but we can see three things. Some people, they, um, I just make a bracket, uh, an explanation. Some people, they see the BIM, uh, building information model, as being a digital twin. Some other people, they see a digital twin as being a BIM. Whatever, it's just a kind of definition. So let's, let's take one definition. The digital twin could have three branches. First branch is the digital twin ontology that we saw earlier on with the hierarchy. The second one is the beam. So it's the origin of the buildings. Uh, when you draw a 3D model of the building, you can organize the information with what we call object-oriented programming, uh, kind of language model, which means uh, you've got a level, you've got the building. Within the building, you've got level one, level two. Within level one, you've got a room. Within the room, you've got uh, a zone, and then you can zoom in, zo you can zoom out. Uh, once you model all this, you can put prices on it, you can put some uh, relationship, you can put some colors, and uh, the, that's, that's about it, that's a lot already. But we see the limit, because uh, the beam originally is static. So this is good for getting the price, overall price, when you are happy with the price, you can uh, nearly, yeah, you can make the building and then you can nearly throw away the beam. It doesn't help uh, that much unless you want to update. Uh, whereas the case A, the digital twin, uh, it's a living uh, specification. So it's a living object oriented uh, model where in production, just now, you can see the building, you can modify the building in production uh, physically and it will impact the the digital uh, element and vice versa. And the last uh, branch, I could uh, I classify that like that. Uh, maybe some other people will classify differently. The, 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 the C uh, group is the, what we call the, what I can call the, the surface and physical uh, modeling. Uh, sometimes it's, it's written here, FEM, finite element uh, model. It's a model of the physical uh, aspects. So you can model the chemistry, you can model the corrosion, the heat, uh, the erosion, and so on and so forth. Uh, how rough is your, uh, the metal? Uh, you put some light on and how the, uh, the, the light, the sun will damage the, the material. So these, those are um, uh, models that you can play with and it will help you predict the future. Digital Twin will help you predict the future because once you model all this, 
it's not just the model and you play with a, the g digital twin and vice versa. It's the, the ability of an artificial intelligence or a model to predict the future according to the, the parameter that you've got. So let's assume that you've got three uh, predictions of the future. And you can analyze and say, OK, I want the, the second model. The second model is good. And because we've got a digital twin, uh, the parameters of the second model that I chose will, uh, will be uh, reported back to the cloud and go down to the proper factory or the building. And the, the parameters will be applied to the, the factory, for example, the temperature, for example, the the, um, the vibrations shouldn't uh, uh, should shouldn't raise above such and such threshold. And if I'm not happy about those predictions, the prediction number two, I can choose the number three, and then let's see what happened in the physical world. So now that uh, we we saw uh, a little bit of the the usage, let's see in a practical way how does that work. So here we've got an Azure Digital Twin uh, Explorer. It follows the Digital Twin Consortium. It's a web page where you, you've got on the left-hand side, you've got all the models that you, that you model. Uh, for example, here I can see the address. Let's say if it's a building, we've got an address. Uh, the quality of the air, the, um, uh, what have we got, for example, the area served, and so on and so forth. Then on the, you can uh, simplify and you drag and drop all the elements and you can make connections between all elements. Once you do the connection, you can model that into three dimensional, dimensional elements. For example, here uh, on the very small, you've got the real ISS and you've got uh, the, the digital twin of the ISS. Uh, on this digital twin, you will find a lot of sensors which you can activate. Obviously, it's not for real. Otherwise, people uh, in, the, in space, they will, they will not, uh, they will not uh, like you that much. But um, you can change the, the coefficient, the, the parameters, and it will be impacting the, the, real, the real world. Now that you model all this, it becomes a standard. For example, um, you've got a standard of a building, real estate building. You've got a standard for a robot arm. You've got a standard for um, a factory and so on and so forth. The good thing is that uh, you've got devices now uh, that could go uh, in a marketplace, publicly available. You can grab the model and use that model. It's very similar in I can make the analogy with a USB port. USB, let's say the new USB port, you can plug a printer to a PC, you can plug a mobile phone to a PC, you can plug a mouse to a PC. Obviously, every single time the PC has got a different object, but the object is self-describing because the, the mouse, we know that it's a laser pointer, for example, you've got uh, two clicks. So we describe all the complexity. Now, uh, we saw that many projects uh, are likely to fail. What we have to focus on is to, to understand what we want to achieve, the what we want to achieve, not the how we do it. Um, how we, we do it with a digital twin is not an answer, uh, a satisfying answer. We want to see the what we want to achieve, what uh, what saving that I want to achieve at the end of the month. And then sometimes it's the solution, it's digital twin, uh, the beam. Sometimes it will be a uh, uh, finite element method. Sometimes it will be something else. So it's important to, to focus on the what and then to see the technical aspects. Uh, it doesn't mean that the technical aspect is not important at all. It is important, but not in the first place. If you consider the technical aspect, uh, the likelihood that you are going to fail your project is really high, so don't do that. If we succeed to, to promote and to 
uh, evangelize the, the, uh, the technology and the knowledge. We will have like a Jamie here in France. He's a well-known guy, uh, maybe even 20 years ago uh, when I was a kid. I was watching all those, um, those uh, serials on TV. He explained us everything about uh, uh, the clouds, everything about uh, uh, the bomb, atomic bombs, everything about science. So what he does is he's making uh, available the knowledge to the masses. And even with uh, the truck that we see here, the aim is to bring the knowledge where the, the knowledge is needed, close to the people. It's not the people uh, who are, it's not the happy few people who are, uh, yeah, who have got the ability to move and to go to Paris, to move, to go to uh, London, to get the best study, uh, who succeed. We have to, to do the reverse. Once you do the reverse, you can bring the knowledge like here that we've got here. You open the boot of the car, you bring out the, the technology. Here we've got a, a miniature of a factory that summarizes a lot of the, um, a lot of the 17 uh, technologies in terms of IoT, industrial IoT. And then you can train massively a lot of people in a fun way. The value proposition of the, the new way of learning is the following. You can teach the students just now. You don't have to spend a lot of time uh, understanding uh, the, the hierarchy uh, data model and the usage of this and that. You bring the, the, the material and then you teach. That's the, when we focus on the what we want to do, it's easy. And then for people who are really geek and they, they are technology addict, we can deep dive. It's not a problem because uh, the, we've got here a real mini factory. Uh, the solution is proven to work. So uh, we've been doing that for a long time. And the, the people who, who manipulate the, the technology and the concepts are kids, six years old, uh, the neighbors, it could be uh, some bosses of uh, manufacturing plants. Uh, here we can see uh, on retirement uh, someone from Renault. So we bring the technology and we bring the concept directly where it needs to be. Near a river, in the in the um, in the park, in the industrial zone, in the mountains. So I, I will explain one of the use cases. If let's say we've got a, you want to understand digital twin, it's complicated because uh, uh, it's, you, you cannot touch it uh, unless you've got everything ready because otherwise it's only PowerPoint, just like now. So what we've got here, you bring the, the mini factory and then uh, this is the first step. The second step, you bring a web page and um, a remote control which could be your mo mobile phone or some HoloLens glasses. Uh, I can show you uh, later on what I've got here. And then you, with, uh, with the HoloLens, you can press on and off uh, the, the model that you see here in a holographic way. You, you see the factory, you press on and off the, the lights and the physical light will, turn, will be turned on and off. It could be light, uh, again, it could be a heater, it could be uh, anything that you request uh, as a digital twin query. And which means you can suppress some uh, manual uh, paper filling and by digitalization, either physical uh, buttons or it could be uh, within the HoloLens or from your mobile phone. The digital twin, as a summary, uh, it allows you to see the future, prediction one, prediction two or three, you can pick up the one that you like, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can change the swipe and change to another prediction. Uh, if, you don't, if you are not lucky to have a, a HoloLenses, uh, you can do it the same with a, um, a virtual reality glasses, some uh, use cases. And with a factory, we can explore other uh, we can explore other concepts um, 
not limited to digital twin. So we can deal with uh, cyber security, performance, and so on and so forth. If you want to see a demonstration of a, a mini factory uh, here in Paris, the next week, December 13th, in uh, Microsoft Envision, we'll demonstrate on a, on a large booth, Microsoft, uh, how does that work? Digital Twin, HoloLens, uh, the, the press of the button in a virtual way. Thank you very much. If you want to know more, contact us, uh, Vincent Tavancam, Factovia, CEO. Thank you. Bye-bye.